All right, here we go. All right. So with this, we need to find the zero. So what that means is it's basically equal to zero. Okay. So if it's equal to zero, right, we can solve. Right. Um. So. Uh, how do I solve this? I'm going to have to factor it. Okay? But it's a cubic. And cubics aren't as easy to factor. So what we're going to do is break it up. And so I'm going to break it up into adding this piece plus that piece. And notice how I'm keeping the negatives inside. Okay? And so then... I'm going to do upside down division. I'm going to go, what's in common, both of these? And it's an x squared, right? Yeah. <laughs> and x squared times what is x cubed? x squared x. And x squared times what is 3x squared? 3x. x squared times what is 3x squared? Oh, 3. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have our pieces here. x squared times x plus 3, right? And then we're going to do the other side and say, well, what is common here? Negative 1. Negative 1. And so what's left is x plus 3, right? Yeah. And that's the key. And if you remember last year, right, last year I was like, ooh, this is great. Actually, we can just keep these together. But I'm going to show you first, it's going to be negative 1 times x plus 3, right? And then I'm going to say, well, what's in common? What's in common between these two that are being added? Yeah, the x plus 3, right? And so I can pull out an x plus 3, and what will be left is... x squared plus negative 1? Yes. Okay? So then I have x plus 3, and x squared minus 1, because a plus minus is a minus, right? Yeah. And then if we remember, this is a difference of squares, right? This is x, the square root of 1 is 1, and what's the conjugate? Plus 1. Yeah. Okay, so we have this, and then we set each one equal to 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, and you solve, and you get x equals negative 3, x equals 1, x equals negative 1, and then you put it in order. x equals negative 3, negative 1, and 1. And you're done. Okay? And that's finding the zeros. Okay? Is that negative 1 and negative 1? No, it's one and negative one as an equal sign. All right. So again, I'm going to set this equal to zero, right? And I'm going to split this up. Okay. I'm going to split it up. Did I hit record? Hopefully, I did. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go. Oh, I'm going to, if I split it up, I already know that 11 and 4 is not the same as 2 and 5, is it? No. 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 So let's, let's try to see if we can do it another way. Let's try to pull out an x squared. Okay? So if I pull out an x squared, then I'd be left with 2x to the third plus... 4x squared, or 5, sorry, 5x squared, 
minus 11x plus 4. Is that right? Yeah. And that's a cubic. Which one, did I write this right? Which one is this? Five. So we know, we know right off the bat that x is equal to 0, right? Because there's an x in every single one of them, so x can equal 0. But now we got to use uh, the rational 0 test. Are you guys excited for your game? No. I hate the way I do. I hate the way I do. But does anybody in here not like fry bread? You like fry bread? You like fry bread? I do sometimes. It depends on the way you like fry bread? Karen likes everything. I love all bread. I think it depends on the way you like it. What kind of bread? Fry bread. How do you guys got this? You asked me a bunch of natives. So R. You asked me a bunch of natives. What do you expect? And S would be R over S, which would be 4 over 2, which would be 2 
factoring that would be 30, two things that will put to be 30, and that would be 12. I don't think I can do that. That's 6 and 5. So that's not going to work. So that won't work. So I'll have to use the rational test also. That's not going to work.